Okay, so what the hell are DJs doing up there? Maybe you've been to a club or a festival set and you've seen them up there and you just don't understand anything. You're trying to listen for what's going on, but it's just going completely over your head. So to understand this, we're gonna break it down into four parts. Part one is the DJ gear. So we're gonna have a very quick run through of what it does. Second part is the music. So we're gonna base this on electronic music. House, tech house, techno, it seems to be the most confusing. So electronic music, what's going on there. Thirdly is the headphones. So I get asked this all the time, What's going on with the headphones? I see one on, one off all the time. I see none on, I see both on. I see them not even wearing them. What's going on with headphones? And lastly is remixing. So when you hear a piece of music that you recognize, some Biggie Smalls or some Michael Jackson, but this is a club set, what's going on? I know the original's not like this. Are they remixing on the fly or have they done that ahead of time and they're just pressing play? So what's going on with remixing? All right. Let's get into it. Okay, so first part is the DJ gear. Now, there's lots of buttons and lots of dials and it looks pretty confusing, so we're not gonna get into all of that. We're just gonna break down what's going on. So you have a player here. This is a player and often there's four of them. So you have one player and another player over here, separate units, and you have a mixer. So I heard Alice in Wonderland explain it as these are your PlayStation controllers, this is the console, and the speakers are the TV. So that's kind of a cool analogy. Um, basically, these are playing the music, this is controlling how you blend them together, and the speakers are playing it to everyone, obviously. Okay, so we're gonna break this down into just half a setup. So we've got one, one deck and one mixer. Now, like I said, there's lots going on, but at the end of the day, they are pressing play here on a song, and that deck is linked to a particular channel. So you can kind of see these dials are in the middle are in a line or in a, in a row. So that's called a channel, one, two, three, four. So you can plug any player, whether it be a record player or a CDJ into a particular channel and that's what controls the volume of that deck. So you can see some LEDs here on this one. So because we don't have any connected, we only have two decks we're running on the middle two. So as you put the volume up, you hear the tune and down and then you have different parts that that make different effects to the channel but at the end of the day they're pressing play and it's coming out of a channel now what's going on with the jog wheel so back in the day records used to spin freely on top of a record player so they were attached to it until you grabbed them they, they figured out in the early days with the turntable that you could put a felt slip mat underneath the record and have independent control of the record and the motor would keep spinning underneath no matter whether you were spinning the record or not and then when you let it go it would carry on spinning at the same speed which is kind of slow. So when you're looking at a CDJ, you press play and you can see this is emulating the record and that's turning round and round. Now if I was to grab that, it would stop it and it would keep playing and it would stop it and it would keep playing so you can now move this around as if it was the record and let it go at a particular point so that's the basics play and jog wheel now to make sure that the tracks lined up they were recorded at a particular speed and when you're playing an electronic set you're probably playing a similar genre most of the night so you want to make sure your, both of your tracks are at that exact recorded speed. We call that a BPM. So on the screen here, we have a really nice visual outlay with a tempo fader here, just like a record player, that digitally tells us. So the idea is to get that exactly at a particular speed, do the same on the other side, and then it's just about pressing play at the right time. Now, without getting into the fundamentals of DJ music theory and when you press play and what tracks do you play and all that, that's a DJ course for later. But in terms of the gear, you're literally pressing play on a track, mixing it through a channel and pressing play on another track, that's DJing. So to understand the music, so 
club music, dance music, music you see at a big festival is what we call electro, all falls under the electronic music genre. And it's for a different crowd. It's birthed out of rave culture in the UK. Long builds, big impacts, big drops, slow declines, and then big builds again, rather than the traditional song structure that we're used to hearing on the radio, which is a verse and a chorus and a verse and a chorus. So radio style music and radio edits uh, get straight to the point. They're quick to get to the point to keep you listening on the radio or Spotify. Now, in the club environment, this doesn't really work as much or on a festival stage. So we have extended mixes. So to understand the music, let's take a quick look. So on the on-screen display here, you can sort of see this bottom part is the overall entire tune and this is a zoomed in version. So let's have a listen. So you can see that the track is just a bunch of beats for ages, okay? So bear in mind that you don't hear this live. This is slowly introduced through the mixer and the tracks take a while to come to life. Still going. So this is the part that the DJs use to beat match and slowly introduce. And we're going to get somewhere in a second. Right. Now we've got some flavor coming in. And as it lines up with the waveform. So that big drop sound has taken 30 seconds or so, actually two minutes that was. No, that's backwards. One minute. So that took a whole minute to come to life. So on the radio, you're going to change the channel if you have to listen to a whole minute of intro. But electronic music builds and sways and bends and breathes differently. So the way that DJs combine that is pretty clever and that's what the skill is with electronic music is how fast you blend them before it's a bit much versus how long you leave it before everyone gets a bit bored. So basically electronic music is designed to be introduced slowly in a bunch of layers in the mixer and so the first minute you don't even realize you're listening to. It's not until that, that part drops that you're already all invested in the tune and away you go. So. Radio music, short, sharp, keep you interested. The modern club listener, they don't want to hear pop hits back to back to back to back. They want to be taken on a bit of a journey. That's where this on a journey comes from, where as an electronic music DJ, you're not just listening to a song and thinking, oh, that's cool. What should I mix that with? The mind of electronic DJ works in blocks of like half an hour or an hour. So... Instead of thinking, oh, that's a cool song, what should I mix that into as a beginner DJ? You want to be thinking of, that's a cool song, now let's find 20 more or 10 more to build up to that and create a vibe, create a feeling. So electronic moves slow and has big drops. Radio music moves quick. Okay, the headphones. So what's going on with the headphones? Why? What's going on with one in, one out? Well, basically... In the old days, you used to have to do all of your beat matching and all of your timing in one ear, which meant that you had to listen to the room with the other ear. So on a mixer, we have these buttons here, these, these Q buttons, and by pressing that and pressing play on this side, the room can't hear it, but you can hear it in your headphone, of which you have a volume control here to use. And it's not until you introduce that to the room that they can hear it. So being able to hear the room is like super important with the open ear and basically just picking the next song with the, the headphone and seeing if it's right, seeing if it's the right feel or the right version or literally just the right song you want to play. So when you have both on, it's often so that you could really concentrate on your mixing. 
So in a party or in a private event or in a private function or something like that, a wedding, you need to be really sure that the room isn't too loud, that you can hear the room going on. But when you're on a festival stage, all of the main volumes are taken care of. You're not worried if you're too loud. You just need to be able to hear both tracks. So that's why they'll have both on because it's too bloody loud out there. You need to be able to hear it. So you're basically just picking the next song. And to be honest, a lot of DJing these days is done visually. There's a lot of big colorful screens that help you mix. So Beat matching by ear is done really quick and it's a bit of a lost art to be honest. But choosing the next song in the headphones, hearing the room if it's too loud, constantly checking if you are beat matched and if your mix sounds good and using both ears if you need to focus inside your head. So picking the next song, that's about it. Okay, now remixing. Now, this is a common question I get when people come in to learn how to DJ. Oh, I've got this really cool Dire Straits riff and this real cool house track, I wanna put them together. And then the second idea is this Biggie Smalls track that goes with this and another idea is this. And I have to kind of stop and pause and be like, this is a production question. So there's a, there's a real line here between making music, i.e. music production and DJing. So DJing at its core is playing music to people and creating a vibe in a room, right? And the way you layer those tracks together helps to the vibe and keeps people interested or surprised or takes them on a journey or whatever you want to call it. Makes them dance, basically. So being a DJ is playing good music to people. Being a DJ is being a really good selector and a music expert in your genre and educating the crowd half the time. You know, being a DJ is reading the room and making people dance when it's your job. Not so much when it's your passion, people often come to see you, especially if you're a producer. But my point is, production is done in the studio. So when you hear that hip hop vocal on that big house track, that has been done and recorded in the studio. And the DJ has just been really clever, like a stalker, and found these edits you know, standing out as a DJ is like becoming a full-on stalker on SoundCloud and finding all the different edits to stand out. So you're definitely not doing it on the fly. Now look, of course, there are some examples to this, like James Hype that's doing all this hectic remixing on the fly. But, you know, it's really hard to pull that off. And if you stuff it up, you sound like an idiot. So you're better off when you find a cool idea doing the remix, which is getting easier these days, doing that in a studio and just playing it live so you can kind of relax and enjoy it. So production is one thing, DJing is another. Okay, so I hope you understand a bit more about what's going on with the DJ gear and what the DJ is doing up there. Stay tuned for more.